Welcome back. Let's get into that market picture now. And Hong Kong stocks ended weaker this morning, finishing the week lower as worries persisted over the impact from COVID-19, even as Beijing unveiled stimulus to shore up what is the world's second largest economy. Now, China reported an uptick in new cases of coronavirus on Friday, although the rise in infections does remain at its slowest pace since January. In Hong Kong, though, authorities reported that first case of, uh, of a police officer to have contracted the COVID-19 or coronavirus. The outbreak has indeed broadened discontent with the city's leadership and even Beijing's influence. Japan's Nikkei index closing down 0.4% to end the day then at 23,386 points. Not necessarily a great day, even across Asia, as you can tell. The Hang Seng index in Hong Kong closing down 1.1%, 27,308 points. And another down day out in Shanghai as that went down 0.3%. It's 3,039 points on that front. The index has climbed 4.2% this week, though, in what is its biggest weekly gain since April 2019. So I suppose it is time for some profit-taking to some extent. Over in the United States, U.S. stocks fell last night, led by declines in technology heavyweights after reports of the new coronavirus cases in China and other countries intensified those fears over the virus's spread and the impact then on the global economy. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell almost half a percent. I think it's around 29,217 points there, with the S&P 500 losing 0.4%, 3,373 there. The Nasdaq Composite, well, that dropped off two-thirds of a percent to end the day at 9,750 points. Let's head on over to Europe now where things of course have been quite interesting there. The sentiment unfortunately is also negative following in the footsteps if you want to call it that of the Asian market. So the negativity filtering right through started really yesterday uh, with the US market not doing so well as I just made note of there. The FTSE 100 dropping down to 7,412 points in this midday trade as well are the DAX out in Germany and the CAC 40 out in France also not doing too well on the local front well it has been a slightly positive week but unfortunately it does end in the red as well the all share dipping down to 57,033 points, 72,504 points then for the industrials as well. So, of course, with Asia having gone down, it does impact the likes of Tencent out in the Far East, impacting Nasperts locally, uh, which, of course, has that massive stake in Tencent there too. So, a big push for industrials to go down. Financials as well, dipping under the radar there as well. All right, getting off into the commodity space, well, resources have sit, uh, are sitting down at present. Well, however, gold does continue to be that safe haven, so the shares themselves also managing to tick a little bit higher, 3,220 and 46 points in this lunchtime trade, platinum dipping lower. The commodities themselves, well, it has been, as I said, a good time for gold of late. It marches on beyond that 1,600 mark, now 1,633 points. Not a good day, however, for platinum and oil, which does go down to $58.43 a barrel for now. And then on to the currencies. Well, the rand has moved far across that 15 rand mark, perhaps sustainably so. Who knows? And hopefully we can get some news with regards to this restrictions uh, of spreading the coronavirus, and maybe the rand will then decide to head a little bit lower. But for now, it is slightly up on yesterday, 1509 against the greenback. A uh, British pound will uh, set you back 1948, while the combined currency is 16 rand 30. Over to the BRICS nations then. Well, some say sustainability when it comes to the red then on that front as you can see some red across these currencies as well let's chat then to warwick lucas who joins us uh, right here in studio and we chat about the week sort of that was warwick thank you so much for the time it's been an interesting week with mining data really being the big talking points these mining companies seem to have done really, really well for themselves, having restructured operations quite extensively, uh, tried to find the best sort of mix for themselves, and they've done really well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, they've certainly uh, taken some very tough medicine over recent times, and, mm. and it's not as if circumstances are easy. But what they've done is they've managed to go from bad to less bad, and as a result of restructuring and being repositioned, yeah. they actually then look quite prosperous mm. so it's it's uh, the payoff after a lot of really hard traumatic work and yeah. I think it's a it's an inspiration to to the rest of us and to South Africa uh, of, of what needs to be done when you get into into difficulties yeah. would we say they've completely turned the tide and I only ask because it feels like a lot of it yes they have had to restructure the business and whatnot but it feels like if it's not for those metal prices turning 
they won't get to where they currently are sitting. I mean, the likes of Kumba Iron Ore seeing massive rises there as well. Even Anglo Gold Ashanti still seeing some profitable numbers on that front. Yeah, I mean, no question the, the, the metal prices have, have helped a little bit there. I mean, yeah. it, it was quite a ferocious low in 2015 and 16. Really, really bad lows there. Um, so we, we have come off a very low base. And, and to a lesser degree, the RAND has been somewhat cooperative as well. So, mm. yeah, sure, some environmental factors. Here's, well. here's one question that will hopefully put you on the spot. Sibanya Stillwater has done absolutely brilliantly, uh, especially with Neil Froneman at the helm. And, and they've certainly shown that even though they got the off cuts of Goldfields and Nick Holland at the time, they certainly turned that around and now have massive, massive uh, ability and, and, and stockpiles as well. And you also have Anglo-American Platinum having done so well with their platinum deposits too. Who would you say perhaps did a better job? Chris Griffith or Neil Froneman? Well, I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's certainly an on-the-spot question. And I think they're, 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 very, they're very different animals. Yeah. Um, I mean, after all, uh, I mean, Anglo Platts uh, uh, did, a, did a very large parcel pass to Neil Froneman. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so you could argue that Fro Froneman really uh, took the bull by the horns. On the other hand, uh, Anglo Platts right-sized until they were happy. So mm. I think they, they, they both did well in, in, in actually... I suppose, what is very different arenas. Yeah, finding exactly what works for them, I suppose, yes. in this context, right? All right, well, coronavirus also impacting markets and continuing to hurt, unfortunately, so some negativity. Do you get a sense, though, that the markets are beginning to say, well, you know what, it's here to stay for a little while. We're not going to, you know, perhaps be too committed, but we also aren't going to be too negative. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to sort of get a deja vu as to what happened with the, the, the various trade talks almost. Mm. Um, I think the, the latest development is a, is, is a bit of a concern as to, to what's happening to uh, possible infections outside of China. Uh, and just to remind, I mean, what, what, what are the three things that make a, a, um, a really bad uh, epidemic? And, and they are, is it airborne? Mm. Uh, does it have a short incubation period? And uh, can it spread before symptoms actually show? And this virus uh, ticks all three boxes. So it still sure. remains something to, to, to regard quite seriously, even though it looks like they've almost corralled it. But I mean, is the genie back in the bottle? No, it's not. So, yeah. you know, complacency is not a virtue. Yeah, so you reckon some, some sense of negativity still to remain here? Yeah, there's a concern. I mean, J Japan seems to have made a hash of, uh, of, of, of managing the, their localized outbreak. I mean, they, they, there's uh, cases there where they cannot trace back and that's a concern because, uh, I mean, J Japan is a, has a lot more elderly uh, people. It's yeah. got a higher potential victim profile. You know, they, and it's a major, major economy. So, you know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not completely comfortable yet that we're out of the woods. Yeah, even in the currency, I mean, that going above 15 rand, it was a key and psychological mark, but feels like it's now just been peppered away. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I think uh, we need a clearer bead on what's going to happen with commodity demand. I mean, sure, uh, mining is not nearly as big a part of our economy as it used to be, but it yeah. still is a swing provider, so it matters to us still. Yeah. All right. Anything you're expecting from uh, Finance Minister Tito Mbowini's budget by any chance? I think uh, let's let's uh, hope that he can he can find the uh, 50 billion that he was talking about. I mean, it's a it's a key number that's been chucked out there, and it absolutely needs to be found to um, uh, to to keep Moody's happy. Unfortunately, looking at the corporate results that have come out, I mean, corporate South Africa is clearly in a very very tough place, yeah. and I don't think there is anything to be had from from tax hikes. I mean, it's going to yeah. boil down to, um, to 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 slimming belts. Sure. I wonder where the slimming of belts is going to come from when you take a look at the sonar address we always spoke about how, how much more we're going to spend on certain things it's going to be a difficult mm -hmm. one warwick appreciate the time thank you so much for that warwick lucas there from galileo capital joining us here uh, in studio up next though my colleague diabo Sito does join you of course with sme on point and it's also your money of course books uh, with nastasia aransa also a little bit later for me though that is where the buck stops my colleagues join you right after the short break do stay tuned this as SABC News.